Hello, my sister and brother Catholics, and welcome to another video during National Migration Week, the week during which the worldwide church, at the invitation of our Pope, is reflecting on our commitment to our sisters and brothers who are migrants, who are seeking hope, healing, opportunity in our nation. My name is Father Corey Brost. I am the executive director of Viator House of Hospitality, a program that welcomes young men seeking asylum in the United States, young men who have fled horrendous tragedies and are seeking to bring their gifts and their talents, their drive to our nation. Today though, I don't wanna talk about me or even about these incredible young men. I wanna talk about a friend of mine who is, lives down in the Arizona-Mexico border. Her name is Joanna, and she's the executive director of another incredible organization, the Kino Border Initiative. And Joanna's organization is really spectacular because not only does it provide assistance to the thousands of migrants trapped in dangerous uh, Nogales, Sonora, Mexico, but across the border in Nogales, Arizona, the organization advocates for their rights. So while they are feeding each day hundreds and hundreds of vulnerable migrants, mostly mothers with young children in Mexico, they're also educating U.S. citizens about our broken immigration system and, in fact, lobbying for changes in Washington. I wanted to tell you about Joanna because she inspires me as not only a servant to migrants who are hungry, but an advocate for migrants in the U.S. And that's what we need to be as Catholics. Just like we walk with two feet. When it comes to protecting the rights of our migrant sisters and brothers, we need to not only serve them, but we need to advocate for changes in our broken immigration system because our broken immigration system can cause so much suffering and fear and tragedy in their lives. I know because I work with asylum seekers. And for example, I can tell you that it can take five years plus for a young person who fled horrendous tragedy alone and at home and came to the US. It can take five years for that young person to, to have his or her proceedings heard. Five years of living in uncertainty, of wondering, will they send me back to the persecution and the violence from which I fled? We can change that system. It's important for us to become advocates to, to protect the rights of our DACA recipients, which you learned about this week. Young people brought to this country by their parents who have been gifts to our country and continue to be gifts. They need us to advocate for a pathway to citizenship for them. It's important that we know that our role as advocates is critical as well for our sisters and brothers who are undocumented workers. You may or may not know, but it's almost impossible to come to our United States with papers to work at low wage jobs. But hundreds of thousands of people have come without documents because they have to feed their families, because they want to send money home so their kids can go to school, because there was no legal way to come. Those sisters and brothers are running businesses, are contributing to our nation. And as advocates, we can push for a system that allows them a pathway to citizenship as well. This advocacy about which I talk is rooted not only in our citizenship, which calls for us to continue to create a more perfect union, but it's, it's rooted in our Catholicism. Jesus was an advocate. Remember, Jesus challenged his society to welcome those who are included. He did this by eating with them, the people no one else would eat with, and then by telling others 
Welcome into your communities those excluded by the systems of power. Our Catholic tradition of advocacy has been reflected through the centuries through incredible heroes like Archbishop Oscar Romero, Romero now Saint Oscar Romero, who gave his life calling for changes in the system of El Salvador which caused so much death and violence. We remember Dorothy Day, who not only served home, people experiencing homelessness, but called for changes in our governmental structure so people could move out of homelessness. And remember Cesar Chavez, one of the founders of the United Farm Workers Movement, who not only helped mostly immigrant farm workers meet their basic needs and negotiate with their companies, but pushed for legislation that protected their rights as workers. So on this day, during National Migration Week, I ask you to remember not only Jesus, but also Oscar Romero, Dorothy Day, Cesar Chavez, and my friend Joanna. Join us and join the Catholics around our nation who not only are serving our sister and brother migrants, but are advocating, advocating for changes to protect the rights of asylum seekers, of DACA recipients, of undocumented workers. In that struggle, not only will you make a difference and live out your faith more fully, but you will find the presence of God, that presence that invades and surrounds us whenever we act for justice, just as Jesus did. In closing, please remember a quote from one of my personal heroes, Dr. Martin Luther King, who said, the arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. My sisters and brothers, join us. Help us bend that arc toward a greater justice for our sister and brother migrants. God bless you.